factor. He says, look, if the Earth can curve space-time, if the, if the Sun can curve space-time so that the Earth falls around the Sun, then if these systems move around, the curves have to move too. So the curves themselves have to modulate like waves. And he predicted something called gravitational waves, which are these silent waves in the shape of space-time. And they are not visible. It's not light. It's pure gravity. It's not light. But if you saw something, you could see a bobbing on the wave as its path changed wow. um, around a moving object. So if the sun decides to you know, do something crazy, we would know eight minutes later when the wave got to us. So I, I think I have this right. There is mm -hmm. a cottage industry rising up in mm -hmm. astrophysics where they're looking at the pulsars in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Pulsars are very fast rotating stars that have extremely precise timing. Precise. So, if there's a gravitational wave not coming towards us, but passing across our field of view, mm -hmm. we can see the effect mm -hmm. of the turbulent space-time mm -hmm. wave on the timing of the pulsar as it goes through the wave. Mm -hmm. mm. And yeah. then you can see them move across the universe. They'll, I mean, they'll bobble around, they're like buoys on, on the ocean. Yes, they'll just, you'll see mm -hmm. this effect as that mm -hmm. happens. And so it's like, whoa. So now, he wrote many papers where he thought they didn't exist. So I'm he sorry. really struggled with whether or not these. <laughs> <laughs> really hedging his bets there. I know, right? I right. don't know if black holes exist, but maybe. <laughs> well, gravitational waves were really confounding. Whether they carried energy or were real in a substantive way, or was just, oh, I'm just changing my coordinates. It's just, it's not physically yeah. real. There's no physical impact. This was confounding for decades. He once would write, he, he wrote papers where he said they do not exist, they would be accepted for publication, and in the space between publication and sending it to press, he would change the entire paper and say they do exist. In the space between it being accepted <laughs> yes, and Yes, between going it into being print. accepted and going into print, he would change the entire conclusion, rewrite the paper, right, and say they do exist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to be right no he matter what. Both papers. <laughs> right, 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 right. So mm -hmm. then, we decide maybe we can detect some of these. Mm -hmm. And Kip Thorne, mm -hmm. who was a guest on our show, mm -hmm. uh, we took Star Talk to him because he's Kip Thorne. Right. Yeah, we, we moved the mountain to Kip Thorne. <laughs> we went to his home office in Pasadena. Nice. He's a professor at he's emeritus now, I think. Yeah, at Caltech. Caltech. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about Interstellar because he was a executive producer on Interstellar. He wrote so, the original treatment. It's like did, his dream idea. He ah. did yeah. write the original treatment. Mm -hmm. He brought on Christopher Nolan mm -hmm. to, to realize those views. <laughs> mm -hmm. It wasn't the other way around. Mm -hmm. So... He uh, uh, petitions Congress and the National Science Foundation and other agencies to, and with a lot of support from other mm -hmm. physicists and the like, Ray Weiss, to, yeah. to build mm -hmm. the first gravitational wave detector.